about the science of 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 the the science of the the science of the science of the you tell us your name, your rank, and the creation staff, the department you are telling. Uh, interaction is to specifically a situation of attack. Uh, if you look at four of us here, we are only newly appointed into our various offices. So it's not like this. We feel that God has has hand in that thing you have done to us. So we will wait when we finish with this segment, although we deliberately did not put it in the uh, agenda, so that we want to take the value of your events by surprise. So when the time comes, we will do that. Once again, we are very grateful. Thank you very much, the Dean of the Faculty of Management Sciences. The Survey Chancellor, the Dean has laid foundation for the interactive session. Please come put our hands together again for the group. And I'd like to invite the Vice Chancellor for his uh, address. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Day I had the, uh, 
I chair the Senate meeting that will be the Senate of uh, January this year. I mentioned that I said that as it is now, I've also covered 80% of what is in my group. So, and I assess every content, every content of the blueprint, line by line. And I find out that all those things remaining to make up the remaining 20% are faculty issues, are departmental issues. And it is my responsibility to tell the faculty and department that say, for us to cover all this remaining 20%, these are the things you really need to do. And all this that I'm going to mention, they are in the blueprint. And I've emphasized all this in many fora with the faculty and departments. And uh, I'm not seeing any results. That's why I quickly put the list down. And I said, okay, I'll go around all faculty and make sure to them. I've done that with the faculty of science. I've done that with the faculty of agri. And uh, I was to do that with arts, was it yesterday or day first day, but because of another shape. We postponed that one. But today, thank God, we are meeting with faculty of management sciences. I have close to about 15 issues which are still pending at the faculty level. But from the uh, explanation of your day, some of those issues have been addressed already at your own faculty. And I must commend the faculty for that. And I know, uh, even the deal has been on ground uh, with me from the beginning. Uh, what the faculty should have maybe must have achieved by now, that could have been a guide all other faculty. And by now, we must have far futures to address across the board. But uh, for me, I think we are still not too late. You see, the first thing, Academic monitoring. Academic monitoring. It's very, very important. What do we academic monitoring here? Our academic staff, how punctual are they to lectures? How regular are they to lectures? And what is the quality of teaching? You see, if you if you see students performing poorly. Either the lecturers are not regular to class, they are not punctual, and the quality of teaching is poor. So, that is why academic monitoring becomes very important. And to do this is to have a team in place that will have calendar, maybe uh, the, the timetable of lectures. And you can do it randomly, not necessarily that it has to be every day. You can choose in a week, okay, you choose two days, and you want to check how regular lecturers go to class. When it is five minutes to the time, one of the member of that team will be in one of the class and stand or even be in the class to see whether the lecturer will be punctual. Because time management is one of the things that we need to teach ourselves and teach our students. When you come to class, it's also part of the teaching itself. Because if you are the type that come to class late, maybe before you come to class, it's about 15 minutes after time, students will decide to come 10 minutes before, before the, you know, after the time. So, what we are teaching them is, we are teaching them how to be late to class. But if you are punctual, if by 10, which is the sorry for a lecture, you are there by 10, and students observe you to be consistent with that, when it's time for your lecture, most of them will be there 20, maybe either 5 minutes to, or 10 minutes to. So the training of students should not just 
be in the subject matter even. Right from your own conduct as a lecturer. So, and again, you need to be regular to class. And the monitoring team can divide themselves into, you know, so that you can sit in a class where the lecturer is even teaching. You sit within the student, within the student there and look at the quality of teaching. All this is to, to, to correct ourselves. Then at the end of maybe week or month, you put up a report. Social lecturer is not punctual for social class, social dates. Social lecturer in a week is not regular. He miss social class. And you have, you have a reason. And when you go to sit in the class, you look at the quality of teaching also. You should be able to report something. So, actually, when I found out that the faculty is not making any move in this area, I organized a professional forum and I gave them that responsibility as part of the term of reference for the professional forum. And they constituted a subcommittee to handle this academic monitoring. And what I expect this particular subcommittee of the professor forum to do is to submit reports at the Senate, where that report will mention departments, or any possible specific lecturer, or the course where there is no regular lecture, no punctuality of lecturer, or the quality of teaching is not as it's expected. And when it's come to say it, all he told is of departments are member of Senate. Things are member of Senate. And by the time this is reported at the Senate, these people will note and go back to their department or faculty and correct this. So once we have made that, we find out that this will even improve the performance of our students. And it will also improve the productivity of our staff. And we are going to produce high quality graphics. But when we don't monitor academic activities of our staff, then definitely we are going to lower the performance of the students. So this is one aspect of those issues that I said is in the blueprint, but we are not doing anything about it. And it is not the office of the vice chancellor that should do this. Because I cannot go and we enter every class, every class to know who is there, what time the lecturer there, and what is the quality of his teaching. It's the responsibility of the department of faculty. Then we have the next, which is Academic Forum for Innovation and Development. Academic Forum for Innovation and Development. Even my blueprints, if you look at it, you see I listed, I think, about uh, five objectives of this. Where we said all faculty should be sensitized and encouraged to create academic forum for innovation and development. And this is to bring the senior academic and younger academic together. You can have either two younger academic and one senior academic as a, as, as a unit or as a team of their own. You can have another one. You can have almost three or four of that. It should just be a kind of established relationship between senior academic and younger, younger one. And they will have schedule of when they will meet. They will meet and discuss issues 
about research. They will discuss issues about community service. They will discuss issues about research grants. And they will be sharing ideas on all other, issues, other things that will benefit students. And you can look at it, this arrangement is, their respectorship also is elite. And the reason why we say we should formalize this is because there are some university or in some faculty where some senior academics are not approachable to the younger ones. And you go to some faculty, you find out that some younger ones are so arrogant that they don't want to even approach senior ones to learn anything. So if this informal meeting cannot hold because of some personal uh, ego of individual, by the time we put it down officially, everybody will be forced to participate in this kind of and that's the reason why we are putting this. So, this, up to now, I've not seen any model from many faculties. Then we have academic mentorship. That is mentoring scheme. Mentoring scheme, particularly in the university, is very important. It's very important. All of us who have passed through classrooms, and I can tell you, only few lecturers give wisdom in the class. Most of us will only give knowledge in the class. And there's nobody that does not need wisdom. And mentorship, what mentorship gives you is a wisdom. It's a wisdom. And when you mentor somebody, you are giving that person an advantage not to have delay in the sources. When you have to take two years to achieve something, if you are well mentored, it you can take six months to get it. Because the wisdom imparted on you through mentorship will give you a kind of advanced talent that will make you to overcome certain obstacles. Because whoever is mentoring you, he will be giving you his own ideas based on his own experience. What are those challenges he faced when he was to do social thing? And he will tell you how he overcome it. And you yourself, before you really reach that point to face that challenge, you are already having an idea of how to overcome that. And you will not even allow yourself to reach that level. And you, you do that aspect of the challenge. And that obstacle will not delay your success. So this is the reason why we say mentorship should be included in our activity at the faculty of departmental level. Because particularly in developing country, we are, we are too slow to meet up with advancement. And the reason is because, one, we don't have adequate facilities to meet up with that of level of advancement that is expected. And two, there is no proper mentorship. So, and that is why this is needed. For example, if any of you get to any leadership position and you want to be taking decision. There are two aspects of decision you can take. You can take accurate decision or wise decision. 
If you are the one tax taking accurate decision, you are only using knowledge. That's the information. And anybody that is using knowledge and information in order to take decision, that person is not considered future as part of the factor in his decision making. And you can use that decision today to achieve the result for yourself, but the same package you have, if you apply it tomorrow, it will fail. Why? Because you did not consider future in whatever decision you are making today. So, but if you are to take wise decision, you need knowledge and wisdom. You need knowledge and wisdom. And that is why if you see anybody say this student is a first class student. That first class, that first class is not enough for him to be a good leader. He's having the knowledge. He needs wisdom to lead. And that's the reason why, even when we are teaching our students, we should have a portion of our time to impart some wisdom to them. Because some of them will live here with first class, and you ask them to help a unit, they will go and fail. Why? Because there are some aspects of social skills they don't have. There are issues around wisdom that they don't, they don't have. And when somebody is not working with wisdom, that person is definitely going to fail. Because you, you'll be working with information alone. You'll be working with information. And anybody can give you any information, you use it. It's just like anybody, any person that is just getting to a new office and you are not careful. I've been telling people, I say, the moment you are appointed into a new office, the first thing you need to do on your own, try to screen the environment before the environment screen you. So that is part of moving the wisdom itself. You are the one to look for information. Don't allow them to come and give you the information. Because they know you are new. The moment they are coming, 80% of information they will give you is what you will use to favor them. Or they will come and tell you about certain people that are dear, that are not your friends. And you yourself, you are not using that information to decide. Before you know it, a lot of people that are supposed to help you to achieve what you're supposed to achieve for the system, you will drag them away from yourself. That means you did not use wisdom. You rely on information. But if you are to use wisdom, you put future as part of the factor of your decision. And you will not just take any information and start using it. You have to see it. You have to know oh, if I take this decision today, what will be the implication of it tomorrow? And that, that's part of the wisdom we are talking about. So, and that is why it's very important that at the faculty level, at the parliamentary level, we should have mentoring scheme in place. Because any academic staff that you see in any department of faculty is a potential dean, a potential head of department. And if those such a person is not mentored, then you cannot help the department or help the faculty. And if they should get opportunity of doing that, they will perform. So, and that is why when you see some people becoming head of the party or dean and they don't know how to work with their staff, that is a problem. There is no wisdom at all. And when somebody is lacking wisdom, it shows the person has never been mentored. But then, if you are not mentored and you are very careful to use wisdom, then you must consult, you must accept consultation. Or you put up official community system in place. And your committee should be dynamic and strategic. Because when we say 
your committee should be dynamic and strategic. It's not a committee that you constitute based on sentiment. And it's not the committee that you constitute based on people that have the same background. It's a committee that should be result oriented. And that's the strategy. So this is very, very important. And you must also, at the same time, try to put some level of trust so that you will study yourself, first of all, as an individual, self-awareness. There are some people that they don't understand you themselves. They find it difficult to know their own area of deficiency or their weakness. And as a good leader must know that. You have to know where is your area of weakness. And then who are those that can feed that area for you? You bring them around you. And that's the only way you can get a better result. But all this, you must be mentored to get this kind of things. So and that is why we are emphasizing that the mentoring scheme should be placed in every faculty or unit of the university. And this also, I mentioned it in my blueprint, but I have not seen any model from any faculty what is the kind of mentoring scheme they are putting in place. The schedule of duties. Every staff, whether teaching or not teaching, is supposed to have schedule of duties. Because if you have schedule of duty, it will enable you yourself on daily basis or on weekly basis or monthly basis to prepare your work plan. So that when you wake up in the morning, you want to go to office, you know exactly what you are going to do for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. You'll be able to identify which activity are lying down for you on a daily basis. But because we don't give our staff schedule of duty, some of them will just wake up and come to office and see that. And they can be approached with any issue. They will be discussing things that are outside even their responsibility. So and that is why we say schedule of duty has to be put in place for every staff so that the staff can prepare his work plan. Because there is no staff that is supposed not to have supervisor. If you look at your appraisal form, when you feel whatever you feel, a, a supervisor is there to rate you. To mark you, to assess you. The same way your supervisor should be able to check your work plan. And it's in that work plan that will also help your unit to know your performance. And through that way, they can also know your area of deficiency. Now we have staff productivity promotion unit in place, and we say this unit is to assess training needs of every unit of the university. How do we know training needs of staff? We must get a work plan of staff. We should be able to know which area the staff need that training. And that will now guide us on how to organize that training for the staff, who should be the resource person, and for how many days or how many hours should the staff be trained, just to eliminate that area of uh, deficiency. And all this is possible only when we have uh, the schedule of duties. Which bring me to the aspect of the work plan. Every, every individual is supposed to be having a plan for his responsibility. And that's why I show my own example. As a vice chancellor, before assuming duty, I prepare my blueprint, and that is my own work. And I did not just keep it to myself. I submitted it to the Council of the University. I submitted it to the Senate. 
I presented at the congregation, and it was put in our collateral uh, bulletin for everybody to have access to it. So, and if any of us should go now and pick that blueprint, just look at it line by line, we find out that most of the activity we have in this university, we find out that we have taught virtually many things, except some of these things that are missing. Even you now. So that is the only way. Because it's only when you have work plan that you can assess the progress you have made. You can assess the progress you have made. So this is another thing that we need to let our staff have under us. And there's one important issue which can also come from this schedule of duty and work plan. And that is a key performance indicator. Today in this university, if we say, okay, let us rate all the departments in this university, or we should rate all the faculty in this university, we should know which, which faculty is the best, or which department is the best, which one is coming first, which one is number two, number three. We don't have any indicator to it. There's no. If I say, let us assess the whole of this university, all the departments, we should rate them. So, okay, this university, which department is the best? Which one is number five? Where are the indicators that we can use to rate them? We don't have. And this was specifically mentioned in the report of the presidential administration part of this university that the university has no any key performance indicators. So I've uh, constituted a committee under the chairmanship of your dean to give us a proposal on this so that we can put it in place. And we shall be using it to even rate faculties or departments in the university. So these are part of the team that uh, I felt should also come from the department of faculty. Because at the faculty level, we should be able to say, okay, we want to be rating departments, we want to be rating programs. What are the key performance indicators you want to use? Because in any system where you are not putting in place how to assess performance, then it's very difficult for you to push for progress. Because you must know where somebody belongs. So that you now know how you can move the person from that particular stage to another stage. But if you don't know the performance of a unit, so how will you, how will you now say this is the stage where this unit is? And the unit needs to move to the next stage. The next stage, what is the status of that next stage? So there is need to have this key performance indicator to help us do that. Capacity building. I know at the central level, the university management is organizing training for staff. And in this university now, there is no category of staff in this university that has not gone for one thing or the other. Because we have in place staff productivity promotion units that organize training. And we put that unit in place to handle training of staff in-house because we have seen some disadvantage also with sending people out to go and get training one if you send people out to go and get training is expensive for the system and it's not effective it's not effective they say that some people when you give them money you give them registration fee to register for training, you give them their GTA, sponsor them adequately. When they go to the training venue, they will just go and register their name and then leave, leave the place. If the training is for three days, you don't see them at that venue again until the third day when certificate will be issued to them. They will not surface again, collect the certificate and come back. University has lost the value of that training and lost its money. And it's happening.
So and that is why we felt, let us put down something that is going to be cost effective and value effective. And that's why we put this in place. So, and it has helped us a lot. Because many people have gotten a lot of training, the money master. So, but this training that we are doing at the university level must also be happening at the faculty and the departmental level. The department should identify areas where training should be done for staff at faculty and department level. Even if through seminars, even if it is through seminars, you can look at the topical issues that cross across the fields in the, in the, in the, in the faculty. And you want people to have a mental knowledge of such issues. If you don't have a first person within, you can have somebody from another university to come and speak to your staff on certain issues that bother on their discipline. At the departmental level or faculty level. So capacity building should not just be something that you left you leave it for university money. No. Every faculty should on semester basis, design their capacity building, you know, schedule. Okay. You can have it as your management because you have faculty management committee. Sit down at the, uh, the faculty management committee and something. What do we want our staff to know? A general knowledge within the faculty of management sciences. And then you identify a resource person to come and speak to them, even if it is just for one hour. And even at the departmental level, you can have seminar. Senior colleagues should have seminar. For me, I know when I was a faculty of Ivy, even as the dean, there is no, there is no semester that I don't present seminar. And it came to a point because of that all other senior police were motivated. And we have made it mandatory that once you come even for sabbatical, before you leave, you must present a seminar at your departmental level or faculty level. So at a point we are even having a roster. People were applying to say, I want to present and then we now have roster. So this is part of the capacity building that we should have. It's not for us to wait until when students are writing projects and then they will present seminar, we gather ourselves to be listening to, to students. We, the lecturers, should also be present. Let your students come and sit and see students. And it is also having some of the things I've said here that you sometimes don't teach wisdom in class. You use that seminar to impact wisdom into your colleagues and also the students. So that is why this capacity building should be part of things that, uh, for me, at the central level, we are already doing it. And in some cases, I put if if there are certain training for category of staff, sometimes I have to go and develop my own notes and be part of the subspace, just to encourage others. Last time they were doing uh, uh, crowd management for any event, I was there to make a presentation. Some of them tell thought I was even uh, a security officer or some of them, but it's about learning from various sides. Uh, do I look at, I'm uh, attending convocation, and I know exactly what is happening. So that my experience should be something I should also mention there, so that they can know, oh, this is how you manage craft whenever you have a big event like this. And it was so, so nice. Everybody left there and uh, were happy. Because there are some people that don't even know that when you go to a place that you are new, which is not your environment, you have to look around to see where there are sign, signage around. Because the people that own that environment, the first thing they need to do is to do a rich assessment of the environment. And based on that rich assessment of the environment, they can put signage in certain places to guide whoever is new in that environment. And you that you are new, 
Or you just enter and sit down. You don't know the rich that is in it. So these are part of the thing. We mentioned it there today that as you go to an environment where you don't know anybody and you are new there, you look around. They are not deciding if those people in that organization are organized. They must have done rich assessment of the environment. For example, every point in the, in the environment has its own rich. This place now has its own rich. The risk nature of this particular Senate chamber may differ from the office of the vice chancellor. Sometimes you go to a, some environment, even step alone, they will put sign and say, mm, be mindful of your step. That is, you should be very careful as you take your step there. All these things are there. So, these are part of the things that we mentioned that day. And uh, people were. Uh, because crime management workshop we had that it was not just for the event of the complaint that occurred. It threw light on so many other things that some people are being careless of. So seminars like that can encourage a lot of people to attend and listen to something that maybe since they have been underwent their study, nobody has been anything like that. Sometimes you attend a seminar. One issue mentioned there will change a lot of things in your life. It's just like reading a book. You come across one book. One book alone can change many things in your life. So and that is why this capacity building, we need to hold on to it. It's very important. Quality assurance. I'm happy I can see a committee, a faculty, quality assurance. It's very, very important. Uh, when I came on board, the first thing that I look into is that you want to raise the quality of the system. And the quality is not just about the quality of our program, you know. The quality of our personnel, the quality of our environment, the quality of our facilities, the quality of our program, even the quality of our management. Because if you have if you want high quality management, it's for you to go by committee system. And that's what we are doing. Because with committee system, accountability will be there, transparency will be there, and you are going to have, you know, get high quality decision. So this quality assurance must cover everything. And in a system where you have quality assurance in place and it's being worked upon as expected, when time comes for accreditation, you don't need to be jittery because you're already prepared. At any point in time, you know which program is being due for accreditation and which program is prepared for that application. Because you have quality assurance. And when I expect departments or faculty to make, to bring out a kind of model of how you ensure quality assurance in the system, I just, I made a position paper at the city, which was given to a committee of uh, this and director to go and fight to and bring back to Senate for approval so that we can be using that. But I made it compulsory for those programs that we presented for application last time to go through that quality assurance uh, list, checklist which I give, and make sure they prepare their reports on those issues listed. So I expect that uh, every faculty will go with that checklist. It's very important. It covers virtually everything that you can think of. And if you are able to assess your faculty in accordance with that checklist, even when it comes to the case of accreditation, you will not have any headache. The next is uploading of profiles. Uploading of profiles. It's very important 
we are all hearing how universities are being ranked. But I can tell you the system they are using to rank universities. No organization will come to any university and come and count the number of buildings you have, or the number of professors that you have, or the number of students you have, or how beautiful your environment is. Those are not the concern. The information of your activity that appear in your university website, that, those are the things they are collecting to read. And we have laws. We are keeping them. We are not uploading them in our website. And nobody is seeing it. Nobody knows we have all these things. And they are rating us just only the little we have. On the website, that's what they will do to rate us. And there are universities that we have a lot of things more than them. They will rate them high. Why? Because what they have, they are properly uploaded in their website. And it's seen everywhere. So, Myself and the DBC inside the partnership, we have worked with uh, the MIS directorates to prepare templates, which is going to be used to upload information about centers, to upload information about faculties, to upload information about departments, and to upload information about individuals. So this is very important. We are going to have team or different committee that will handle for center, for faculty, and for department. But when we come to that of individuals, the template will be used to train individuals that this is the kind of information about yourself that will be uploaded in the website, and then we'll teach you how to do that. The way we all go to the website to do our online uh, filling of uh, upper form, you can do that and upload. And everybody can see who you are on our website. And there are instances where a professor alone can change the fortune of your own university. But if you have such a professor in place and nobody knows about him, then we are hiding our fortune. So we need to be serious with this. And I know very soon uh, the committee for building of uh, faculty website will be meeting with people and that of the department. We have to make sure that we do that so that people should know about us. There was one instance where the, the DVC inside the partnership went to Abuja with uh, his people, and he met somebody from the National State here who has a firm, and uh, he want to collaborate with that person, and they submitted a letter. But Center for Energy Studies, Agri can come in, physics can be there, chemistry can be there. But before, you see most of the lecturers will just stay within their chemistry department, they will be doing research. Those in Agri will be there, will be there, will be there. those in physics will be there. But when you say Center for Energy Studies, is to bring many disciplines together to force us to collaborate. We have Center for Security Studies. Those in sociology will come. Those in economics can come. Even those in physics and other stuff, they can come together under the Center for Security Studies. So this is the reason why we have so many centers. At least, now we have close to about 12 different centers. Just to enable us to collaborate within and outside the university. So we must take note that this collaboration is a resource of its own, and the university must take it strongly, uh, particularly at our faculty and uh, departmental level. The resource mobilization is another issue. To me, at the central level, we have done what we need to do because we have created resource mobilization units. We have constituted resource mobilization committee. But to my surprise, the resource mobilization committee for the first two years that we put that committee in place, they did not achieve anything. 
So we have to reconstitute the committee again. And the day we are at least inaugurating them, I also presented a paper here on some mobilization to let them know how they play their role. When they started, because this morning I received a progress report from that committee. So which means something is being done. So at the faculty level, we need to also do something like that. You have to mobilize resources. And when we say resources here, we are not just focusing on financial or material. Information is a resource. If you invite somebody to come and give lecture, that information is giving you is a resource or a resource. In fact, if you encourage your staff and students to develop good reputation, that reputation itself is a resource. Because sometimes somebody may just visit your office and your well-organized office, the neatness of it, and can earn you a lot of things. I've seen a situation where somebody visited the office of the vice chancellor and he was carried away and he said, VC, I like this office and I want to contribute to this university because of the setting of this office. What do you think I can do? The VC now said, come and build school of programming school for us. And that's what happened in the National University. That they are building was built by Central Bank when Sanusi was there. Sanusi came to office of the Vice Chancellor, Dwari Shams in Amani. Because somebody with a high taste. When he came, he asked fiscal planning to restructure the entire office. And if you enter there, you, you so people will give you support the way they see you. So if they come and see you with a lower price, then your support will be lower. <laughs> but if they see you with a higher price, then you will expect something higher. So that is why all of us, even in our offices, let us give our office reputation. When somebody has high respect for you, he's going to do something of high value for you. So the way you conduct yourself, what you say, is part of the resources we are talking of. And we must train ourselves in all this. So, the sub organization is an aspect that uh, maybe if uh, there is a paper I presented, I don't know whether the sub organization will need to have a copy of it. The faculty can get that. We, there are categories of resources where listed and mentioned some specific ones and how we mobilize all those ones. Response to core values. Response to core values. I know when I came on board, most of my meetings, I mentioned core values several times. In fact, I nearly made it uh, the university anthem because of the emphasis. And I was emphasizing on this just to make sure that we change people's minds. When they say core values, it has a lot of implication on the activity and performance of the university. Integrity, innovation, and excellence. And I can tell you in my own office, anything I want to do, I must respond to that core values. Respond to that core values. And when you respond to that core values, that is where you will create uniqueness for yourself. In fact, a good example of it is the recent convocation we have done. That core three core values, is, if you look, you see it in the convocation we have done. Done. So the same thing, anything you want to do, if you want to teach, respond to core values of this university. You want to research, respond to core values of this university. So, integrity, meaning doing what is right, even when nobody sees you. 
and we have just said it now about academic monitoring. Those that are going to class late, no integrity. Or you are not regular to your class, no integrity. That means you are not responding to the cover of the universe. Innovation, you should always bring new ideas. Even whatever you are teaching your students, be creative. We have seen cases where some lecturers will use a particular note for close to 10 years teaching the same thing to students. That is not innovation. There is no innovation complete in that one. So I, ideas is dynamic. Ideas is changing every day. So we must be moving at least to meet up with the advancement in the whole world. And that is the essence of that innovation. Bringing new value, new ideas. You have to be creative. And then the next one is excellence. And for you to be excellent in what you are doing, you have to also be unique. And your uniqueness depends on your hard work. That means if you want to respond to the excellence, you have to be hard work. Hard working person, both at the, at the, the staff level and student level. So this command is for all of us, whether you are a staff or a student, respond to it. If you are responding to this alone, all you are doing, you don't have any problem. And that's why sometimes when I talk about uh, the people that uh, give foundation to this university, Pioneer Vice Chancellor, Pioneer uh, the Registrar, they've done a lot, a lot of work. Because I know that time when the VCs and Registrar of the new university were appointed, they appointed only the Registrar and the Vice Chancellor. So what you see, this integrity, innovation, excellence, if they tell you how many days or weeks it takes them to bring these three things out, to be unique, and it's just for this university. The logo of the university alone, because I know in my okay, it took me almost three months when I was in there, almost three months we are battling to get a logo. Because no logo is, you have to even be able to explain what you mean, which of whatever symbol you use in the logo. The core value of motor you put, you must be able to explain what you mean. And these are what we call enduring commitments. Enduring commitment. For the next 1,000 years, these things will remain. So, for those that now work to bring those, these things in place, for others to come and be building upon, it's not a small work they have done. So, I know what it takes to have this. But anybody that comes and just see integrity in the way and you don't know how, so, how many ways they've written down, cancelling, to come and have this. Because when you say core values, they are saying this is the selected one, core. We have so many values in the world. So many values. And when we say value, anything acceptable to people anywhere in the world. And we have so many of them. Patience is a, is a, is a value. Humility is a value. So, but for them to bring this thing out, I say this core value. I mean, everything we want to do respond to this core. Selected from all thousands or millions of values that we have. We selected this thing for the university. So um, some of us will now come, we ignore it. You know, whatever activity we are doing, then we are not fair to people that put this thing in place. So it's very important we should be responding to these core values. And it can even be part of the key performance indicator. You can rate invest. You can rate the faculties or departments. The extent to which they are responding to core values. It can be rated. And then even individuals. So this is very important. It's one of the things I say I want to bring to your attention. The next is participation in e-learning activities. Participation in e-learning activities. 
there is need for the Department of Faculty to start taking off some programs from what they didn't just mention. We already have an idea of what to do to bring up some programs. But if we want to make it more robust, we should key into the e-learning. You can develop certificate programs, some diploma programs that people will enroll online. Online. If possible, only when they write an exam that they can just come here. So they don't need to be fiscally on ground. Just develop your lectures and upload in the wrong classroom. Anywhere they are, whether Lagos, Ibada, Sokoto, Abuja, the, 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 the moment they register, they are giving access to the lecture, they will be taking their lecture online. So at every department in this university you know, has programs they can showcase for the e-learning. So I think your faculty should also not be exempted in this. Sit down at your management level, identify some of the certificate courses you want to do, and the diploma courses, bring them to Senate for approval, and then we will have the e-learning directorate, put all the necessary arrangements in place, and then we can advertise for them. The use of policy and planning documents. The policy and planning documents, we have a lot of them. I think so far we are about to conclude printing of close to about 10 or 12. So once they are ready, we are going to unveil them in one of the events, possibly in a congregation. And once those ones are in place, is binding on all of us. Any decision we want to take, it has to be guided by those documents. So uh, it's important we know that no university can be administered without policy documents. No university can be administered without planning documents. So we have put many of them in place. And uh, once they are ready, they will be widely submitted. And is to make the system to even run itself. The vice chancellor must not be on ground before anything will be taken place. So, and this is what we want uh, for the system. So, when those policy and plan document are in place, every department of faculty will have copies and uh, will be implementing whatever is stated in those documents. Students pick up programs. Because we want to make students, and I'm happy with the initiative of the team, the officials of our students, uh, the Faculty of Management Science are here. I launched speaker program for students last session. And the reason is to also enable students to perform their role as a major stakeholder in the management of this university. Students as major stakeholder and uh, major stakeholder because we are all here because of them if there is no student in this university there will not be office of the vice chancellor and no lecturer will be here so and that is why since we are all here because of them they must also be part of the management of the system we must give them opportunity to raise their concern when they have problem we must give them opportunity to say it and we must listen to them. And that is the reason why I've encouraged departments, faculties to have staff student forum where students can be given opportunity to also assess the performance of their departments or faculty. And again, the management may even learn from the students. 
Because they may mention one problem that you are the game or into the you are not even thinking of or you don't even know that those problems exist. And if you ask them for their own view, they may even give you solution that may be so effective. So at the central level, we have launched that speak up program and it's already yielding a lot of the results. Because at the end, when we, I first of all met with the students and some of them complained that this program is very, very good. They want it to be more frequent. They want to be meeting with the vice chancellor more frequent. And uh, in case they cannot meet the vice chancellor, what do they do? And that was what brought the idea that we should have suggestion box in some strategic locations where students can drop any issue of their concern. And I think we have close to about seven or six suggestion box around where students drop you know, comments. And a staff from our office has been assigned that responsibility to go around either weekly basis or two, two weeks to collect those documents. And they will bring it to my office. There are officers also that will sit down and compile all cases, all the cases. And they will bring it to me. I will go through them and call attention of the faculty where cases have been raised or departments. Or if it is something about Senate, I mentioned that the Senate. And recently, there was a case where some students even mentioned the name of some staff. The way they are teaching and the way they are harassing them and other things. So yesterday, I, I called some of the staff privately and I told them, next time, I will just come to your faculty and announce you what your students say about you. And once I do that, you know what it means. So, the student with this arrangement, with this arrangement, they don't have any fear. They are part of the management, except if they don't want to point out issues. You can write to the vice chancellor, though you don't have direct access to the vice chancellor, but you can write. Put it in that box, it will reach me. And the moment I get to my table, I don't waste time to take action on that. So the students of this university, they have no reason to say they are coming out to protest. The management has considered them as part of the management. If you say you are coming out to protest, you are only working against yourself because we are giving you opportunity to also air your view on how certain problems that you have observed should be solved. So, and this is the essence why we put this uh, speak up program. And as I'm saying, at the faculty and the departmental level, we should key into this by giving students opportunity to also give their view about issue. And that will help us a lot. Respect for rules and regulation is very important, no matter how small the rules and regulation is. The reason why rules and regulation are being put in place in the university is because we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different tribes. We, we belong to different faiths. And some are stronger than the other. If you didn't put rules and regulation, there will be no other image. Some people will dominate the place. And that will cause a lot of problem to the weaker ones. So, and that's the reason why we felt we should uh, put rules and regulation in place. And it is a responsibility of all of us to respect the rules and regulation. So, we should comply to all ethics in the system. All ethics. It is a responsibility for all of us to respond to that. And it's going to help all of us. And uh, that is the only way we can achieve our goals because we have other limits. Because when there's no other limits, then what you expect is randomness, and no randomness give any results. So because people will be moving in different directions.
But with rules and regulations, there is point of convergence. Everybody must respect the system. And this is also another way that we can encourage ourselves to work together. The next issue is digitization of old journals, publications that are not online. We have cases where some of our professors, particularly old professors, have journal publications that are not online. And some of these journal publications, they are having high quality. And because nobody has access to them, because they are not online, it's not giving them the rates. So some of the professors that we have in place that uh, their journal not online, nobody can rate them, nobody can rank them. So how do we make their publications, you know, visible to the world? Already we have started talking with the firm that did the digitization of uh, staff file and uh, student records. So once we conclude, we are going to write faculties or departments. Those people that have their journals that are not online, there is a place we arrange where all those documents will be digitized. And where we have a platform in our website where that will be uploaded. And then it will be visible all over the world. People can start referencing those. Because the more they reference your work, the more it will rate you and rank you, and the more that will also affect the image of the university. So we are already doing that. But the other advice I want to give is for some of us that we are supervising our students, we should encourage them to be referencing our work. Somebody will be supervising a student in this university, and the student will be referencing somewhere in America and UK. What you are doing is you are raising the status of those people and you are not raising them. And you that you are supervising the students, is there no concept that you can guide your students to put as part of his work? So that people can also cite whenever that work is online. So we need to work in this line to project the image of ourselves and that of uh, the university. I think these are the issues I'm here to mention to you. These are what I've mentioned in my blueprints, uh, which are the responsibility of the faculty and the department. And I felt I should bring it to the attention of the faculty and the department so that we can work on this and complete implementation of what is in my uh, blueprint. The other issues that they didn't raise, uh, these are issues that I'm going to uh, look into them. The new programs we have discussed with him, and I've asked him to go ahead to start preparing the proposal for Senate. The other thing I mentioned about the staffing is uh, I know it's not only your department or faculty, it's a general phenomenon, but I know the staffing situation is more intense in some area than the other. But we are, we are looking for how we are going to address that. All of us know the reason why uh, many universities cannot recruit because of the IPPIS matter. We give us the, the, the section. In our own case, we are even lucky to do some recruitment when I assume duty first. And uh, the, that opportunity, we, we even rush it if not. We could have not even got up, uh, no permission to do this. Because immediately I noticed we have projects in our personnel that we have not uh, utilized. I have to rush to write to enable us in groups. 
at least to make up uh, what we have now. And since we finished that, the recruitment become very difficult. Uh, what we were able to bring at the visiting level and sabbatical level, we even find it difficult to pay those people. Because until close to end of last year, before we have to push hard, about 58 visiting and sabbatical uh, staff, some of them for almost six, seven months, they were not paid. And they were working for us. So we were able to push and uh, at least greater percentage of them, close to 90 something percent, were paid even in their, their arrears. So, and with the good news, we had that uh, the RPPIs will be relaxed for the investors. So that is what we are hoping that when we have that opportunity of getting out, that will give us uh, you know, a way of uh, bringing more staff. But for now, I want to plead that let us continue to manage as we are doing. And uh, in any case, we can liaise with our e-learning directorates where there are courses that we don't have lecturer for. We can go through online so that somebody can, can get a resource person to come, deliver his lecture here, we record and upload on Google Plus and let our student assess it. And uh, when it is time for exam, the same person can still come. The way we invite uh, people for external examination, as well, we can use them. Somebody can come, do two or three days to present his lecture for us to record and upload on Google Classroom. And then we give him a link. He can interact with the students uh, to collect comments and response. And during the exam, he can come, give exam and mark. If he cannot wait to mark, he prepare his marking school and keep for us. We get somebody to mark it. So we have to manage with this. And uh, a lot of uh, departments have been doing that. I have a case of uh, ML, MLS or something like that. Somebody from the UK or so, there so many courses uh, to this e-learning arrangement. And uh, they are finding it easy. They are doing any difficulties about it. So if you get somebody that wants to serve us through this e-learning, no problem. He can even be in this university if he didn't want to travel down here. Do us in all this uh, lecture there. At our studio, there is a link there. As you are doing it there, they can record it directly here and then upload to Google Classroom. So that is what the man in the UK is doing. He didn't come here to present his uh, lecture. He tried there that he did it and uh, they recorded everything down here and upload to the Google Classroom for the student classes. So this is another new way for us to solve the problem of uh, shortage of uh, the staff. So we need to also adopt it. If you meet with a director of ELEM, they will tell you how we go about solving some of this shortage of uh, staff. Just identify those courses that we don't have staff for. Then get somebody elsewhere that I think can serve as a source person. We'll pay their honorarium. And, uh, they can, that will give us opportunity of solving this uh, problem. So the issue again is why people need to be patient? It's because pioneering a faculty or pioneering a department is not something easy and it's an opportunity for you to learn a lot. And uh, if you are patient, you will learn a lot of things through this process. So for me, I've pioneered a faculty from scratch. When I was in the National State University, KFI, I was the first to be recruited to faculty of Agri here. So, and I know what it means. Even when we started for almost close to four or five years, we don't have a building of our own. You know, we were hosted in the College of Agri, Lafayette. 
It was when I was the dean of faculty of Harvey that they built one small uh, administrative block for us. And I was the first to even move to that administrative block. And then we distributed the other small offices for the new students. But all other lecturers were in College of Harvey. You know, but still, under that kind of situation, we were able to get full accreditation for all our programs. Just because of what I've mentioned to you about collaboration and other processes that we put in place. So it's not something easy when you are pioneering a new faculty or a new department. You only just take it as a source of knowledge also. Because if you're able to start any faculty or department from scratch, it's not a big, it's not a very small uh, you know, exercise you have done. And it's a big advantage to you. So the same thing even for university. I started the university from the scratch. So and I know what it means to be a vice chancellor in a new university that is just starting. It's more difficult than for you to be in a vice chancellor in a university that is already established. So because you have to put so many things in place. So and that is why. Whenever I look at what for a year vice chancellor and register of this university, I commented because I know what I personally also went to. It's the same thing. Only two of us were jointly appointed to start a university from the scratch. Nobody gave us anything. The only thing they gave us is the name of the university and said, okay, this is your appointment letter. Just carry the name of the university. Anything you see in Federal University of Joshua, Girls from the scratch. We are the one that planned everything. And that was why when I was handing over the person that uh, took over from me, I was telling him, I said, up to 1,000 vice chancellors that will administer this university, I share in their glory, the glory of whatever they have achieved. Because I need the foundation. So you yourself, I want to encourage you to do well, but whatever performance you have, I share with it. Because I need information. So if I didn't do that, if you are to come, maybe what I did will be different from what you would do. So the same thing. And uh, we should look at it like that. This is a new faculty. People are just starting. Use it to learn. Use it to learn. There is a lot you can teach others when you start something fresh. So, and it may be a situation that poses challenge to you, but it has its own advantage also. It has its own advantage also. Because when I finished my sabbatical here, the former VC said, I want you to help me start faculty of agri. And uh, the first day he mentioned that to me, the first thing I told him was, if you want to start faculty of agri, I need faculty building first. And why did I say that? Because in National State University, if you started without faculty building, yeah. I say I need faculty building first. And the following week, when they were meeting on the procurement planning committee, they now put that the faculty of admin, the one that, so that was when they took decision to do that. So it's part of knowledge. So if I didn't experience that, I will not have the opportunity to advise and say we need faculty people first. So and that is why you have to just look at this as a learning ground and uh, you should not be disturbed so much. It will, the whole thing will come to, to pass. Uh, you, you all know, you have your faculty building only that is not completed. And we're already moving, you know, pushing seriously with the third form uh, to come and finish those buildings. Actually, when they sent their team here, after the whole assessment, they went back, and then the report was uh, looked into. Third form now released or the allocated certain form that we should use to complete those three faculties and the Senate building there. So, and since we cannot just say, oh, all the contractor come, you take this, you take this. Not, that's not how it's supposed to be. We ask them for pending work, go and bring your cost estimates. And when they brought it, what they brought was almost three times 
the money that uh, Telfon allocated. So we have to reach to, to Telfon again and say, look, this money will not also to identify which of the projects this money can finish while you apply for another fund to clear the others. So, but um, by the time we put those things in place, that can only handle the Senate building and the Faculty of Environmental Design. And then we have sent that one to them. And the contractors have been asked to, to come and continue their work. Where already we are preparing another submission for the other two families. So, at the end, it is something easy for us. We could have, because initially we took that bold step to say we want to go in and so by the time they brought the cost estimates, we found that the university cannot handle that uh, project and we don't want to do something that will not enjoy the building. Rather, we should be patient so that we have something that. Uh, will help you to be more productive when you get there. But we are all we are seriously pushing uh, for that building to be ready very soon. So uh, the issue of uh, the classroom, uh, I think we, are, we need to also look for how we can sit down with you people that are in the takeoff sites. Because I've been telling people, no matter how limited the resource, there should be a way out through some flexibility arrangements. We have done that. That's why I was telling you that when I was in National uh, University, KFU, my faculty was inside College of uh, Agri. So, what I did was to make sure that my own timetable officer and the timetable officer of college meet from the beginning of the, the, the session of CNSA. They will now arrange how each of these facilities will be made available to all of us. And we will not even have any clash. Because we know where to begin. At the moment we finish our own college, come and use it. So this flexibility, but in a situation where people want to own the class, that it is not be for us. Nobody should use it again. That's where the problem comes. But if we sit down, we can have a way of using it with some flexible can and it will not cause any problem. It will not cause any problem. So we need to still meet and uh, maybe my personal secretary will uh, look for a date. Let us have the list of all the plans. Of that committee. That committee is being headed by a HOD business is in, and we have started a we'll go around and we'll do the initial search. Then, under accounting department, I also want to appreciate you, sir, for appointing the first deputy dean of the faculty, who also who also double as the head of the department of accounting, and also at the departmental level, we are keying in into the blueprint of the university, and we have a mentor mentee program in the department. And my interest is to know that the HOD is my mentor. The D also is my mentor. So and it goes like that. And we are also planning a sub student forum. I think before the orientation or after the orientation, we are still there. Yes, sir. But, sir, another issue that I'm impressed is the digitization of online journals. I think it's very important for, for our investors to have our journals online is one of the key performance indicators that is being used for ratings. Like some of us, uh, with young lecturers, most of our journals are online, Google scholars and uh, research gates and all. And we monitor our citation almost on a daily or weekly basis for citation. So I think it's a very good idea, sir. And I think uh, we need to key into that. So the issue of uh, staffing, so it was a suggestion. I don't know. Uh, in the department, mostly in the Department of Accounting, where we don't have a, maybe senior lecturers in the department, we have junior staff who uh, maybe they, they were appointed on a maybe as an assistant lecturer because they don't have PhD or 
and they spent a certain number of years in the university. And maybe after they have PhD, they have PhDs and they have uh, publications and they made certain criteria for the next level. I think sir, it will be uh, is it okay to maybe upgrade them to the next level or so that it will uh, so that it will encourage them or motivate them and since they are also pioneer staff of that department or that faculty. Finally, sir, uh, as the dean rightly said, our accreditation is due this year. And my prayer is that uh, we should be in our faculty building before the accreditation. <laughs> thank you, sir. Firstly, I want to thank you for all you've mentioned. But I want to draw your mind to something you're doing very well, and it's called brand image positioning in marketing. For the first time in a long while, somebody called me about full affair. It was not admission. It was because of when they saw the school and how far we are doing, especially through the bulletin. Then secondly, um, you mentioned something. You mentioned something about partnership, and I have seen quite a number of pictures. I want to ask a question. For the students, we have the speak up program and there's a way they give you feedback. So my question is this, for linkages and partnership, is there a way people are contributing towards other angular aspects where they can improve on that? For instance, most of the pictures I've seen are with government settings, most of them. And I think with my little knowledge in partnership and BD, when you partner with government, it is long term. But in the short and medium term, NGOs will come in as low hanging fruits to help you achieve your aim. I don't know if that should look into, but I would like to suggest that. Thank you very much. And I know uh, so far we have other private uh, agencies that we are already partnering with. So the most important thing is we should be able to identify those agencies that have activities that are related with our programs. So whether they are from government or from private sector, once they have activities that are related to our programs, at least we'll be able to partner with them. And uh, you know, the partnering with any agency is a continual process. So, and there are certain partnerships you will engage the maturity period will take long, long time, and some can take short time. So, but the most important thing is for you to know your partners and engage your MOU with them and start running the system. So, most of you should be able to identify that and advise your day or the university management. Oh, sorry, the team of the university. Uh, you want to also inform me that. Uh, Every item that we have itemized, that we have issues that we have raised with the solutions for the faculty and department, we will take care of. Uh, you mentioned and uh, appreciated the faculty to have taken some steps in some of, of those uh, itemized things. Uh, but I want to assure you that we are going back to the faculty in making sure that the orders are being tackled and tackled effectively. Uh, we want to also thank you again for the support so far to the department and the, and the faculty because we believe that without your guidance we will not have uh, been able to get to where we are today. Uh, your advice always to us is well appreciated. I will not say too much because if I want to continue I may not uh, stop. Uh, yeah, I will not stop because uh, he's uh, my mentor. Yeah, to In fact, uh, before the convocation, maybe three days or four days of convocation, I was called by my team to have a write up from the book of series for the convocation. And the book is Imprints of the Year of the Conversation of uh, Professor Abdurrahman Shiro. Within three days, I was actually confused because the topic given to me was linkages and partnership collaboration. 
And uh, even though it was my field, I couldn't tell my thing that I, I'm not going to do. So I just went, tried to go down the school, and I thought that I couldn't get enough to do that. So a day to have to call, and the 10 minutes the vice president spent with me on phone was able to make me prepare and write for that particular series. Thank you very much. And this, that is also one part of my, <laughs> my publication because I've been published that I did to my uh, series of uh, journals and, uh, and uh, uh, publications. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to use only thank my dean for always uh, coming to our rescue, the advice, the opportunity given to us, and always visiting us. He's south of us, uh, he's a professor of computer accounting, uh, he's my dean, even though I'm the head of department. Once we are in faculty office, he becomes my dean. But when we come back to the department, <laughs> uh, how to, uh, <laughs> because I, I, I'm not, I'm not Taking as my own staff. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and we are working seamlessly and uh, very effectively. Seamless. Uh, I want to thank you. Yeah, and my immediate past um, uh, team. Uh, I want to thank you because uh, you accepted me to the faculty, uh, even though the VC put me in, and you gave me the environment to be able to. And my colleagues in the HODs, the former HOD, my friend, when the first time I met him, I just told him, you have to put me through. So, and, and he did that very well before he stepped down from that position. Thank you very much. One good thing I, I like about the faculty and the department is that uh, we work together. And then I any official matter. No matter how sensitive it is, I will not hear anything from anybody. So, this is the kind of person you should go to. So, and that is the reason why you can still see that we are working together today. I know of somebody that was my PA, I don't want to mention it, when I was a graduate. But because the way he wanted me to run the system, I refused to run it like that. After a point, he left me in Joshua and left. And, 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 and uh, when I got this appointment, he was going around people again to see whether I will, I will pick him as a peer. I said, no, you have already run away. So, and I cannot use it again. So, that is why. Anything you want to do today, just think of future. Because all of us here, whether we like it or not, we have future. We have future. And that future should be respected today in your decision. And that is why you should not look down on anybody. Don't allow somebody to use it against another person. So I've been telling people, as a VC of this university, you may do something personal to me, I will not even feel bad about it. Because before I assume duty as a vice chancellor, I have even planned, I have a plan in place for my enemy. You see? And I have a prayer also, whether for them or against them. So, and my prayer is a double edge. <laughs> so, so that I told God that, look, I want to go into this office. Definitely, whether I like it or not, some enemies are already there. And when I get there, some enemies will still come. But God, please help me harm them. Then secondly, whatever negative thing they say or do about against me, God, let those things move me closer to more sources. And so and that is why no matter what anybody will do to me, whether even in public as a person, I will not be bad, I will feel bad about it. Because if I what if I'm feeling bad about it, I don't want my prayer to hold. But if I want my prayer to hold, is to be patient with them. But if you do anything against the system, I will not.
at Babi. And the reason why I have to react badly is because I will give the account of my stewardship. And when I will be giving my account of my, my stewardship, those people that use me to do, to carry out any decision against the system, they will not be there to defend me. And that's why anything you want to do, say, don't do it because of anybody. Say the truth. And that's why sometimes when I come to say it, I talk in a way that people will say, what, what is wrong with this man? No, it's the truth I'm telling you. I'm talking in a way that we should join hand and put the system in a good manner to, for, to benefit all of us. It's not about myself. It's not about myself. There are universities that uh, by chance not doing both sentence. Why? Because they are afraid of uh, people not to challenge them. There are universities where vice chancellor refuse to recruit professors because they want to be in Senate with those few associate professor and the rest, senior lecturer. And then the vice chancellor, whatever he wants to say, will not say this and it's fine. For me, I'm not that type of guy. Even if you get your professor 20 years before me, come and sit and listen it. It's about knowing and wisdom now. Bring it to the table. So, but if you are afraid and you feel that uh, the, the Senate should not challenge you, then you are not ready to work for the system. So, as I said, your coming raised a lot of uh, uh, comments and uh, some want to even raise dust, but uh, I would really put you on <laughs> And now, those that want to raise God, they can see what is happening. So it's about system. And I'm, I also advise you, not the fact that you came, I also advise you that you are here to work for system. You are not here to fight anybody. And for me, I assume in this university, I don't even have enemy. And that's why you can see that I work free with anybody. Even those people that I know, this a lot of things against me in the, in the past. At the point, they are already in my hand, I can crush them. But I still allow them to do it. <laughs> right, because if I crush them, it will not reduce anything. Yes. If I leave them to go, it will not do anything to me. So some of them, they are even feeling that maybe he didn't know what he did against him. <laughs> somebody asked somebody, I say, are you sure this is a way of boosting with you? It's a way. <laughs> And you see great things like this. It's our way. It's just looking at you. <laughs> so, this is, if you want to enjoy moving with people without any problem in your side, just forget about anything they believe that God is handling your matter. So, I want to appreciate all of you. And please try to cooperate with your team. Try to cooperate with the team. Nobody is 100% perfect. Even I myself have been telling people, I said, I have my area of deficiency. I have my area of weaknesses. And that is why I always bring people that are better than me to surround me so that I get better results. So the reason why I'm saying that is that in the area of my deficiency, I look for those that will come and fill those areas. So, and the same thing I want you to do. You have a lot of capable hand here. So it is the way you utilize them that they work for you. Everybody that you see here is an asset. I told you, when they tell you this man is wicked, that wicked is an asset. You as a leader just know when to use that area to <laughs> So don't allow anybody to bring any negative, negative information about any individual of your time. This man is a wicked guy. He drinks something against you. Any negative thing they say, just look at that negativity they mention to you as an asset. You know where to use that. And if you do that, you are free from anything. And some of us, again, I want to say it here, I've, I've mentioned it in several places. 
a lecturer or a professor went to a class to deliver or to, to give exam. Say all the students should bring out their pen. You are going to write exam today. And he distributed play sheet to all of them. And on the center of that play, each paper, he put that spot with a pen. He now said, okay, all of you, you can write, that's your exam. Write what you see. Write what you see. So 70% wrote that they saw dogs, dark spots on the middle of the paper. And 30% said they didn't even see anything. And if do you know what that means, our mind is always on the dark spots. Because that paper you see, there are two things you should observe there. The dark spots are the middle and the white space around it. But nobody sees that white space. So the same thing is our reaction to God. We always emphasize our problems. We forget about the favor around God that God Almighty has given us. Somebody today may say, I don't have a cobalt in my pocket. That one alone you know, is a problem. You forget that like, he has head, he's moving, he's breathing. Go to hospital to somebody that not even breathes. So, the same thing when you are relating with people. Don't just look at the dark spot. If you look at the dark spot, you will never have cordial relationship with that person. But try to look at the good aspect of the person. That will increase your love for him. And you should also know that spot is, a, is an enemy of gratitude. gratitude. That spot is enemy of gratitude. That is why we say that spot. That means problem. Problem is enemy of gratitude. So if you are a type that doesn't give gratitude at all, you don't thank anybody, you don't thank God, your problem will continue to expand. But the moment you are giving gratitude, that gratitude alone will be wiping away your problems. Gratitude wipes away problems. And this gratitude is a friend of happiness. And problem is enemy of happiness. So if you are giving gratitude always, it will be clearing your problems and attracting happiness to your life. Now, this is what is making problem of our country to be worse. We don't give gratitude. We emphasize our problem always. And the moment we are emphasizing the problem, it will be getting wider and wider. And that's what is wrong with us in this country. Until we wake up, we always give gratitude to God. Whatever situation you find yourself, you thank God. But if you believe, oh, is this woman made that's a great problem for us? That may you think it is there is no God to solve your problem. So this is one of the things I feel as social sphere with you people. I want to thank the team for this week. Thank you very much. Please please uh, allow me to interlude or to interject rudely. Uh, I'm happy that the Vice Chancellor is sitting to give more gratitude to God and to our Vice Chancellor. I want all of us to give the Vice Chancellor a resounding applause in a uh, standing occasion.